Hey friends, it's Jill here with the Hometown Homestead, and today we are going to be talking about math with confidence, and specifically the future of math with confidence and what it looks like halfway through the grade four pilot program. In the end, I'm also going to go over some details and differences that I've noticed with my second son, who's doing the first grade math with confidence program versus our years with Singapore Dimensions and Singapore Primary 2022. So if you're curious of how that's all lining up halfway through the year, make sure to hang out because you're not going to want to miss some of the things that I have to share. So currently we're in the middle of our ninth unit of the fourth grade pilot program, which seems incredible that we're already past Christmas and moving into the spring. But I wanted to share with you what one of the lessons might look like if you decide to stick with math with confidence in the long run. Now, before we get started, I have to give a warning. Not all of these lessons are guaranteed to be present in the actual curriculum when it does come out. These are samples, we're giving feedback on them, and then she is making edits and doing the things that it takes to make them better for the student, better for the teacher, and actually just be an improvement overall for the entire curriculum. So I'm going to give you ideas of what we're doing now, but just keep in mind, Kate will stay with the general ideas, but maybe not these specific lessons. So don't get caught up on what I'm gonna show you as thinking it's a must in your school. Just know that it's generally what we're looking at for the future going forward. So in this unit, we're working on converting measurements. We're doing metric system as well as US standard system. We've already moved through inches and feet, and now we're doing meters, centimeters, millimeters, and kilometers. So that's the back half of unit nine. Now in this particular lesson that I pulled out, it's actually the one where we're converting centimeters to millimeters. So we have a ruler up here to show us what's going on. And this is the page that the student and the parent do together during the lesson. So if you can see right here, we have two heads on the pages with two heads. That's the ones we do together. The ones that have one head are theirs to do on their own. We went over the conversion from centimeters to millimeters, and then we did some going both directions. So centimeters and millimeters to just millimeters, as well as millimeters to centimeters and meters. Then we measured out our pieces of wire down here and wrote the, the links both ways in both formats so they could see that millimeters themselves convert to centimeters and millimeters. Now, down here at the bottom is why I picked this lesson. And you can see, I have a few different colors going on here. This was a game called measurement tag. And it's one where I actually had to pull my guy away and say, listen here, bud, I've got other kids that I need to go hang out with. So we're not gonna play a fourth round of measurement tag. Uh, but basically it starts out with both of you, player one and player two, each having their own corner of the game board, and then you roll dice and use those two numbers on the two dice to decide how many millimeters you need to make a line. One person is trying to chase, the other person is trying to get away, and we ended up going three rounds, so we have three different colors here before I finally called it quits. Anytime where I have to tell my son that it's time to stop his math, is a big win around here. So just know that a lot of games are still present. Almost every single lesson has a game, but occasionally there will be some that will replace a game with an activity, um, like imagining that you're walking through a park and you're gonna go from point A to point B and point B to point C and measuring all of those and converting from meters to kilometers and back and forth, those kinds of things. So you'll have an activity or a game every single lesson. Now, once you complete the parent-led section, we have two different pages for the student to do. One is a page on the actual topic that you just discussed. And then the back page is a review of topics you've already covered. This page is worth its weight in gold. It means that we're constantly reinforcing problems and concepts that we've done before. So while we might have done area and perimeter four units back, You'll still see area and perimeter come up on your review pages throughout, as well as division, multiplication, multi-digit addition and subtraction. So it's really training the kids to be on guard for watching signs and making sure what operation they're actually doing, as well as keeping topics fresh in their head that they might otherwise put to the side if they didn't have that constant review built in. These pages go really fast for the kids, but it's also a great way just to keep it front and center and to keep their mind fresh so we don't ever have that, I don't know, we haven't done that all year kind of conversation that we used to have around here. Every single day, they're gonna have at least two word problems and often four. They'll have two on the bottom of the regular page, which we did this day, 
We had two on the regular page as well as two on the review page. Now, word problems are my son's least favorite thing to do, but he has really got to the point where he can address them, identify the question being asked, and form the operation to solve it. So while he doesn't really love it, it really is building patience and resilience in him trying to continue to work through those problems as he goes forward. The actual teacher's manual part of this lesson is the same format of all of the other Math with Confidence teacher's guides that you're used to already. Um, so we start off the lesson with a warm up, which we're gonna review skills that we've already learned or things that'll be relevant to the lesson ahead. So in this particular lesson where we're working on millimeters and centimeters, we're gonna go over how many feet is in a mile, how many centimeters are in one meter, and how many meters are in a kilometer. So they will refresh those in their warm up and really focus on those things throughout. Also in the warm up, we're talking about relating those links to items at your house that will keep them front and center. So one thing it says on a meter is to look at the front of your refrigerator and that width is generally the same width as a meter. So the kids have a great concrete visual in their head of exactly what they're looking at. So this math comes to life for the kids. Moving into the lesson, it's actually fully scripted. So if you're new to math with confidence, just know you're not gonna be left hanging. It's fully scripted so you can look at it and see, I'm gonna read all the things in bold. We're gonna do those activities on the page. And then the visuals that you need from this actual student book are placed on your page to where you can see exactly what you need to be looking at and pointing to at the same time. Moving into the game space, it tells you exactly what the object of the game is how it's supposed to look and has an actual image down here at the bottom for you to get a good visual so you're never left wondering exactly what the game is supposed to look like. You have that information in front of you as well as the answers to any of the charts or graphs that are actually supposed to be on their page. So if you ever get caught in a situation where you're not sure exactly how to formulate the problem or what's going on, you have that information right in your book to use as a reference to make sure that you're on the right track going forward. So that's gonna wrap up what the actual lesson looks like. And now we're gonna dive into a few more details. One question that always comes up when talking about a math program are what are the manipulatives and how much stuff do you need to buy? Now, what I found so far with this program is that I've had most of the stuff around, but if you don't have any math manipulatives in your house at all, let me tell you what we've used so far. We have used pattern blocks for fractions as well as measuring degree angles and perhaps another unit or two that I'm not remembering right now, but pattern blocks have come in really handy and I've actually been amazed at how easy they are to use for things like fractions that I had no idea they could be used for as well as measuring angles. I really have been amazed with how handy pattern blocks have been. In addition to that, they also keep the little ones who aren't involved in the lesson equally as entertained if you can just slide them some pattern blocks over to play with while you're involved in the lesson. One of my son's favorite things that we have added is this degree wheel. These two little circles are black line masters that came with our unit on measuring angles and they're really, really cool. It shows you to slide it and then you can see exactly how large or small an angle is with the measurements of right where you're sliding the two together. This tool has been so fun. The kids have really liked exploring it and they can see the relationship between the size of the angle. It says the white space here would be a 320 degree angle. And then sliding it closed, this reads 110 degrees. So it gives them a concrete idea of what the angles look like before they even move into the protractor. So that brings me to the next manipulative that we use, which is our protractor. Now, my son is using his protractor as his bookmark for the book that we're actually reading right now or that he's reading on his own. Bonus tip, if you haven't checked out these Lane Walker books on hunting and fishing and you have boys that are reluctant to read, this has been a big hit for us. But yeah, the protractor, that's the other ad and the only other thing that we've needed all year long. So pattern blocks and protractor, degree wheels provided, and everything else you need comes in your Black Line Masters up to this point. Moving on from there, I wanna talk about what my son is thinking of the program. So he was a very reluctant student, to put it nicely. Um, he had been through Dimensions with Singapore as well as Primary 2022, and he just really had not developed a love for math. If anything, I would say it was the opposite. So while he would tell you today, if you ask him how math was, that he doesn't like it, he always says he hates whatever we're talking about, um, he also doesn't consider the games that we're playing at the end of a lesson part of his math. 
He thinks those are just for fun, even though they come on his math pages that are a part of his workbook. Um, I often have to tell him at this point that it's time to shut down the game or we have to set a timer specifically when the games are in the warm-up because we can get caught playing a game and spend 15 or 20 minutes just on a game because he's so competitive and wants to play until he wins most of the time. So anytime that I'm having to drag him away or tell him it's time to cut it off, I consider that a success. He still does refer to this as the fun math in comparison to the other two. So I would say if you have someone that's begrudgingly doing their math work right now, it's definitely worth considering that they're going to be much happier and so are you when they can move into something that's going to bring them a little bit more joy than drudgery. Oh, another thing that he really enjoyed is that we recently had a cousin over and our cousin goes to public, but he's in the same age. So when he walked in, I sat them both down together to play the game for the lesson and they really, really had a blast. So if you have similar aged cousins or even an older brother or sister that might be able to jump in on some of those games, it's a really good way for you to be able to step out and let the kids play and see how long they can actually play together and work together cooperatively, learning at the same time and freeing you up to do some other things. Okay, so what does it feel like from the teacher or parent perspective? Well, I can tell you that this year math has been so much easier at my house. And I really appreciated the fact that we are able to one, accomplish the lessons in much shorter time. Uh, my hands-on time, I try to keep under 15 minutes and then I let them do the worksheets on their own. So that has been a huge relief for me. My son wasn't doing the Singapore worksheets without me staying really close because he had lots of questions and that is not the case at all anymore. So that's been an absolutely huge win for us. If you haven't yet seen my review of the Singapore programs and our experience with those compared to Math with Confidence, make sure to check that out and I'll link it at the end so you can take a look at that one and it might help you decide what's going on with your math future as well. When we started this year, my son was really familiar with his math facts and had some of them concrete, but he didn't have them all mastered. And one thing I will say is I was slightly worried about how this year was going to go with that being the case, but I found that because of the warm up and the constant repeating of the processes that we're doing and the games that we're playing, he has really blossomed in his math facts skills and he's doing a really great job. So if you're someone who has a child that's a little bit um, not solid on those facts, just know that even at this fourth grade level, that's something that is just growing with them and you're not gonna have to worry about how they're coming along. They can always reference a multiplication chart that you can keep in the folders along with their math books and then they have that to go back on. It's really helped through the first part of the year to build automatic recall of some of those facts that he was pretty sure of but not concrete on. So he's been able to check himself and see those errors and really coming along in the way of knowing them all automatically. So between the warm-up and the review page, we're really able to gain momentum moving forward when we have to revisit topics. While we've already worked on division as well as single digit by multi-digit division, we're getting ready to move into long division. And be because of the consistent practice with the warm-up and review pages, these things staying on the front of their mind, it makes the process so much easier when bringing it back and adding on to a skill that we've already learned. So that is a really, really helpful tool to help us moving forward. So as you can guess, if it's up to me, which hopefully it is and Kate doesn't kick us out, as long as Kate will have us in the pilot program, we're gonna be moving forward into fifth grade. This program has been so, so, so beneficial for my family and I can't say enough great words about it. Um, I will tell you, people often ask me, the pilot program will open a very slim amount of spots in the spring, usually in May, Kate will send out details to that in her newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to do so. And I'll put a link down in the comments to the newsletter so you can try to get in on that. And then when those spots do open, first she allows those in the current program to move forward if they'd like and opens any remaining spots to the public. Set your alarm. Because last year when this came down, we had a family vacation planned. I set my alarm and got up to do it because it closed within hours. There were not many spots available and so many people went in, obviously because this program has been such a great help um, for many families like mine. And when you love it, you can't help but share it. So I'm kind of creating my own problem here, but definitely do get in if you can. If you can't, there are other families who have felt like their children have struggled for a couple years and they have decided to step back into the years that are available to solidify where their kids are at and to gain confidence moving forward so that they can advance on pace 
with the years becoming available this summer and every summer moving forward. So this coming summer, Kate will be releasing the third grade program and then it'll be a full year before the fourth comes out. Kindergarten first, second are currently available and this summer we'll be moving into the third grade publicly available as well. So if you currently have a third grader that's struggling, just know that the third grade program will be coming out this spring and you could do it over the summer or just save it to the fall. I don't think anyone with a struggling kiddo would be sorry that they took the time to go back and do another year of third grade math if they were moving into a program that helped build confidence for their kiddos. So you might consider that if you've been in another program and are struggling and looking for something new. Before I wrap up for the day, I do want to mention what's going on with my first grader. Um, like I mentioned before, we did other programs when my oldest was in first grade. So it's been really interesting to be able to compare what the lessons felt like and the vibe at math time compared to where we are now with the math with confidence first grade. And I can tell you that my first grader is really picking up his addition and subtraction facts so well that I'm not even sure we'll need to do much work on them throughout the summer, which is what I had planned with going back with the addition and subtraction facts that stick series. I have planned that just to keep them up to date and consistent with keeping math on the front of their mind. But right now, even with so many months remaining in the year, if I were to ask him nine minus three, he's gonna pop that off first thing. He's really developing automatic recall of those facts. So I'm not sure if that specific practice will even be needed this summer because of how well he's doing. Now, if I were to compare that to how our Singapore first grade year went, it was struggle. There was lots of tears. That first grade dimensions book is really, really advanced and pretty tough. Um, that all being said, it did not build fluency with facts. They kind of presented a chapter and expected you to work on it on your own. And I don't feel like that set them up with a solid enough base to be doing the work that they were requesting to be done. So for me this year, in comparison, halfway through the year, hands down, much better year, much happier student with moving into the Math with Confidence program. So just wanted to throw that in as a quick update for anybody who is curious how it's going. So now that I've given you the background on where we are now, let me know if you have any additional questions. I'd love to answer them. I try to get back really fast, um, but sometimes that doesn't always happen with a busy house running around here as well. If you have those questions, make sure to drop them below. I would love to help you out. And thanks for stopping by the Hometown Homestead, and I will see you back soon.